nicest to MC at a heavy metal concert. I think they chose me because I'm bigger than most of the guys there, so the theory is, well, maybe they won't eat him. <laughs> and it's, it's weird, when you listen to hard metal, especially like this death metal, and that's, that's a bit too angry for me, but I'm listening to it and I found out something quite fascinating. I found out that apparently, <gasps> is a word. Because <laughs> these guys come on and it's like this Norwegian band says, Hello, we are Hammers of Hades. I go to sing you a song about my mommy. <laughs> There were people in the freaking crowd singing along. <laughs> That's when I kind of became like most South Africans when I got the phone call to say the house had been broken. So I said, yes, Oaks Lucky, I wasn't there. Actually, I'm from Joe Big South. It was more like, yes, I but And Oaks Lucky, I didn't roll him, eh? It's him so hard, it's five toes old from. But no, the thing is, I was upset that they, that they took stuff, but I was actually more upset about the stuff they didn't take. Like they didn't take any of my clothes. Nothing. You know, and to put this in perspective, these were the world's worst criminals. This wasn't, this wasn't like the mob. This wasn't organized crime. These were stupid people. Poor people. <laughs> they used a shovel that was in the garden to break the window to get in. And the stuff that they took, they wrapped in a sheet from the linen cupboard and ran away. So these were criminals who were so destitute they couldn't even afford their own utensils to rob my house. And they turned their notices up at my clothes. <laughs> you know how ugly that makes you feel? I feel like the world's worst dressed person. <laughs> You know, although, the other side of it, I suppose, as a criminal, there really isn't that much need for, for pink lycra. <laughs> and uh, no, to answer your next question, I'm not a cyclist. Now... <clears throat> I was driving to work the other day, because I, I, I do have, have a day job. I only really do stand-up comedy for the groupies. <laughs> and from the sound of that, there are a couple of years tonight, that's good. Um, it's all right, I am taking antibiotics. <laughs> Um, no, Victoria was talking about how unimpressed the Queen looked after her, her skydive. I don't know why he was surprised. I mean, the Queen never, ever looks impressed. Did you watch the, the Royal Variety Show? Did you see the Royal Variety Show? Anybody? Ah, oh, it's, it's amazing. I love watching the Royal Variety Show. There is never a greater example of the peasants cavorting for their Queen than the Royal Variety Show. Because the Queen doesn't know what the hell is going on. You know, particularly when there's a comedian on stage. You see someone like Michael McIntyre and he's kind of like, uh, 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 and then you go to the cupboard and you look and you find your wallet and it's in the cupboard and you're all, uh, uh, and the queen is like, what on earth is a wallet? I remember the triangle. I remember that musical appreciation class. Remember, it was like primary school they had that musical appreciation class where they used to put you in a room and see what your talent is. You knew you were cuck if they gave you the triangle. <laughs> I remember holding that triangle. All the other kids are. <laughs> There's Vic in the corner. <laughs> so, I was driving to work, right? I'm going through the back roads of Park Mall, and there's a pigeon in the middle of the road. Now, miners, I know, no problem, you don't have to slide out, because miners get out of the way. Miners are intelligent birds, it's almost impossible to get those little fuckers. And, uh, so I, I try not to run over pigeons. What I do when I see a pigeon sitting right in the road looking as dumb as a pigeon can, I tend to slow down. And then it's about 50, 60, pigeon, all right, slow down, he'll move, he'll move, he'll move at some point. Jesus Christ, he's not moving. Last minute, I swing the wheel, I must have missed him with my wheel by about that much. He actually disappeared under the edge of the car. Um, so I saw the wheel that way. Right. Now, he disappeared under the edge of the car. Must have missed the tire about like that. So all that must have frightened the bugger. Hey? He must be flying up behind me. I look in my rear view mirror. No. Pigeon is exactly. He hasn't moved. I thought, Jesus, that's a turn up for the books. I've just lost a game of chicken <laughs> to a pigeon. <laughs> I know you've got weird things in health clubs. You've got the sauna. Now, who here uses the sauna or the steam room? Anybody? Anybody would have looked at that? No, because I'm getting to something here. Who here uses the sauna and the steam room with no clothes on, but wearing flip-flops? <laughs> or worse, Crocs. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what sort of the health and safety point about that is. You're going to the sauna or the steam room. You don't know who's used it before you. You don't know if the person who sat there before you has, like, Ebola of the anus. <laughs> so you'll go and sit in Joe Central, wearing flip-flops, but nothing else. What is the health and safety message? You're saying, no, 
to Anthony's foot, but bring it on to Galloping Cockroach. <laughs> I'm trying to figure that one out. I'm sorry if I seem a little bit like on, on, on the edge or, or nervy. I haven't been getting a lot of sleep recently. I spent the entire of last night standing in my bedroom, wearing nothing but a leather gimp suit, holding a one-foot black rubber dildo, and waiting for burglars. <laughs> Because I figure there is no better security system in the world when one of those guys enters your bedroom than for you to be dressed like a massive pervert and to go, I've been expecting you.